Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're tackling something, well, pretty ambitious. We're looking at source material that's this wild mix of uh, advanced physics, computer science, and ancient human practices. Yeah, it's definitely a unique blend. We're diving into the QSOL research series by T. Slade, focusing on the Unified Field Framework, UFT, and then the Tensor Field Theory, TFT. And what's really grabbed me is that this isn't just theory on paper. There's actually a GitHub repository with code, simulation prototypes. Right, it's intended to be testable, which is crucial. Yeah. It moves it out of pure abstraction. So our mission for this deep dive is to pull out the central thread holding it all together. This idea of invariant resonance. We need to figure out what this framework is really claiming about geometry, sound, and information. Are they separate things or are they somehow evolving together? That's the core question. And look, this material is dense. There's wave equations, tensor calculus. It's a lot. But it, let's maybe boil it down for you right at the start. The big picture here. The whole QSOL framework is trying to put resonance right at the heart of physics. It's suggesting that vibration, patterns, frequency, that's the fundamental link. The physics connecting matter, energy, and importantly, consciousness. So moving away from physics based on static points. Exactly. Towards a physics of uh, dynamic vibration. That's oh. the goal. Okay. Wow. That is a huge premise. Let's start at the beginning then with the foundation. The Unified Field Framework, the UFT. Looking at the source definition, it's described as a synthesis. Unified field theory, okay, standard enough, but then acoustics and ritual practice. Mm. That last part immediately makes you go, wait, what? How are acoustics and ritual being woven into, you know, hard physics? Well, that's where it gets really interesting. It's about bridging the super theoretical, the mathematical formalism yeah. with uh, subjective experience, how we actually perceive reality. The UFT basically proposes that resonance think sound patterns, yes, but also architectural resonance, even psychological patterns from repetition, that resonance functions as the experiential analog of a unified field. Analog. Meaning that when we experience these deep pattern resonances, the framework argues we're actually engaging with a manifestation of the unified field, the one that couples matter, energy, and information, or Wait consciousness. Hold on. Are you saying, yeah. are they saying that ancient cultures using acoustic rituals, maybe building resonant chambers, they were unknowingly doing unified physics? That's the implication, yes. It's definitely a big philosophical jump. That seems massive. What's the proposed mechanism? How do you actually link a ritual chant, say, to a physical field quantity like a metric tensor? It really requires you to shift perspective. Instead of seeing ritual as just culture or belief, right. the UFT frames the intentional use of rhythm, sound, specific frequencies, pattern, movement. It frames these as generating a specific, maybe even measurable coupling effect. And to map these abstract physics concepts like metric symmetry coupling constants onto their acoustic or cultural counterparts, the framework introduces some very specific uh, non-standard visual models. Ah, and here's where we get the specific QSOL terminology. I saw references to a sexagesimal phase wheel, trinary digital DNA, a mod 64 codon wheel. Exactly. For someone listening who doesn't have the paper in front of them, what are these wheels and codes actually doing? What are they translating? Think of them as um, informational translation tools or maybe symmetry converters. The UFT relies on mathematical symmetries that aren't just our usual base 10. Mm. The sexagesimal wheel base 60 gives a really high resolution way to model cycles, oscillations, time phases, uh -huh. often connected to geometry angles. Okay. And the trinary digital DNA, the mod 64 codon wheel, these are designed to map really complex informational patterns. Hmm. Things like the symmetries in particle physics or even genetic codes, mapping them to their vibrational or geometric equivalents. And they're like quantum Rosetta stones, translating symmetry between different domains. That's a great way to put it, actually. Yeah. Translating the language of symmetry from geometry into, say, acoustics or frequency information that you could potentially work with. Okay, so the whole point of UFT is to connect the theory to practice, to embodied practice. Generating resonance patterns becomes a way to potentially, performatively, demonstrate unified physics. Exactly. It's about finding the universe's rhythm and, well, maybe learning to play along. Right. Okay, so if UFT is the unified map laying out the connections, let's talk about tensor field theory, TFT. This is where things start moving, right? The dynamics. Precisely. TFT builds on UFT. It's the part of the QSOL framework dealing with change, with evolution. Specifically, it looks at something called self-dual locked tensor dynamics, which is a mouthful, I know. Uh -huh. But the core idea is that geometry, information, and sound, those three key things, 
they don't just exist side by side. They have to evolve together, mm -hmm. codependently. And the mechanism for that evolution is this invariant resonance. So reality isn't static. It's this constantly vibrating structured field. And TFT tries to describe the rules of that vibration. Yes. And to build that description mathematically, the framework had to bring together three quite different mathematical toolkits. Which are First, you need tensor calculus. That's the language of geometry, curvature, how space itself is structured and can bend. Okay, geometry, got it. Second, Fourier analysis. This is all about frequency, breaking things down into waves. So that's your sound and vibration domain. Shape and sound. What's the third? The third is this concept of feast to self-duality. This is about informational symmetry. It acts like a constraint, a rule that ensures stability and coherence as things change. Informational coherence. So sound, shape, and information lock together in one dynamic framework. That's the picture. You mentioned TFT treats these tensor fields not as static pictures, but as resonant manifolds. What does that mean for their stability? Do they fly apart? Well, no, that's the point of the lock. It implies constant but coherent motion. The structure holds together because of this fact phase symmetry. This flock, this phase relationship, is probably the most critical technical piece. The paper says it ensures informational orthogonality and self-duality. Okay. Informational orthogonality and self-duality. That sounds like it's doing some serious heavy lifting. Can you give us an analogy for that? Let's try. Um, imagine the universe has a kind of built-in error correction, like cosmic autocorrect. Okay, I like that. Orthogonality here means the different information channels, let's say, are independent. They don't interfere, like clean radio signals on different frequencies. Right. Self-duality means the structure itself has a fundamental symmetry. It keeps its basic identity even while it's transforming. It's like looking at yourself in a mirror, changed, but recognizably you. So the phi lock is the rule that keeps it all balanced. Exactly. It ensures that if the geometry, say, starts to wobble or drift towards chaos, the underlying informational symmetry sort of pulls it back. It keeps it in a resonant, stable state. The manifold is always changing, but its core coherence, its truth, if you like, remains invariant. And that idea, invariant truth, brings us right to the core principle, the kind of philosophical statement underpinning the whole thing. It's quite elegant, actually. What is it? Truth is not fixed. It is a resonance that remains invariant through transformation. Huh. Truth is not fixed. It is a resonance. That really captures the dynamic aspect, doesn't it? A fluid reality, but with underlying stable laws. Precisely. But okay, philosophy is one thing. To model the physics, you need the actual math. The paper gives a governing field equation for this. It does. It's meant to capture that dynamic balance between the geometry and the information within these resonant manifolds. Yeah. It looks like this. Double mu, double mu, tij, plus phi, plus tij. Right. Now, for a lot of us listening, that's intimidating. Greek letters, subscripts. What's the basic story that equation is telling us physically? Let's break it down. Think of maybe a perfectly tuned guitar string vibrating. Yeah. The TIJ part yeah. represents the tensor field that's our structure, our geometry, the guitar string itself. Right. The, the first term, the ki shi mu ti part, that's basically a wave operator. It describes how the wave, the vibration, moves and propagates through space-time. That's the dynamic part, the plucking of the string. Okay, movement. What's the second term? The phi plus 2 tij. That part acts like a mass or frequency term. It represents the inherent properties of the field, its tension, its natural resonant frequency, the note the string wants to play. It involves those phase terms, phi and psi, which connect to the informational symmetry we talked about. And a whole thing equals zero. Yes. And that's the punchline. Setting it to zero means you're describing a perfectly balanced harmonic system. A source-free system, meaning. meaning the dynamic movement, the plucking, is perfectly counterbalanced by the inherent tension and frequency, the resonance. The equation governs how space-time curvature and the information within it find that stable, coherent vibration, the invariant resonance. No external forcing needed, it just is. That makes it much clearer. Wow. And again, this isn't just abstract math. You mentioned the GitHub repo. Exactly. The sources talk about simulation prototypes, Python code, specifically designed to model this kind of harmonic tensor resonance and the Foglock dynamics. So they fully intend for this to be tested, simulated, visualized. It's a practical research framework. That seems to be the clear intention, yes. Okay, so let's connect this back to the bigger picture then, especially the sound aspect. If TFT needs Fourier analysis frequency as a core component, then sound isn't just a metaphor here, is it? No, not at all. It okay. becomes fundamental. And the acoustic side might be the most uh, 
revolutionary part in terms of potential applications. Remember we said the UFT includes a global data set of archaeoacoustic site frequencies. Yeah, that stuck with me. That shows they're seriously trying to analyze how ancient structures, chambers, temples, tunnels might have been built specifically to resonate at certain frequencies. And what does the framework claim about why those specific frequencies might be important? Well, it pulls out two really interesting ideas about acoustics. First, microtonality. The notes between the notes. Exactly. The frequencies that aren't typically in standard Western scales. The framework suggests these aren't just slight variations in pitch. They might represent hidden dimensions or complex non-local information encoded in the field structure. Hidden dimensions. Wow. Okay. What's the second idea? The second relates to the use of sound in those ancient sites, what they call ritual entrainment. Right. The chanting, the drumming, the pattern practices. What's that doing physically, according to this QSOL theory? It's theorized to function as the coupling constant. Coupling constant, like the, in standard physics, determining interaction strength. Precisely. So the idea is that intentional use of rhythm, specific tones, pattern practices, acts as the mechanism that tunes or locks the physical fields, yep. matter, energy, together with the informational fields, consciousness. It's like the dial controlling the strength of the unified interaction. That pulls everything together in a pretty mind-bending way. So T. Slade's QSOL work is using rigorous math tensors and this idea of informational symmetry, the full lock, to build a picture where physical space, geometry, and abstract things like information or consciousness, they aren't separate, they're linked, they co-evolve, and they're sustained by resonance, by sound and patterned vibration. It really forces you to shift how you think about sound. It's not just something we hear. It could be a fundamental structuring force in geometry itself. <laughs> it gives you, the listener, maybe a new lens to view things through, not just asking what things are made of, but what frequencies they resonate at. What is their essential vibration? And this is pre presented as very current research, the QSOL series, T. Slade 2025 publication mentioned. Definitely cutting edge. So we've journeyed from this unified field idea through the dynamics of tensor fields, all centered on invariant resonance. We can now hopefully see geometry, sound, and information as these dynamically balanced partners. And thinking about that idea of ritual entrainment as a coupling constant, a way to link physical fields to conscious ones, and the aim of making resonance a performative demonstration of physics, it leaves us with a pretty provocative thought for you to take away. If the very structure of space vibrates, does intentionally participating in powerful acoustic resonance, maybe in specific resonant architecture, does that fundamentally change your relationship to physics? Mm -hmm. And what other kinds of structured human entrainment, maybe beyond obvious rituals, might be subtly influencing or interacting with physical fields all around us without us even realizing? The universe is singing, as they say. Maybe it's time we learn to listen more closely.